Hello and welcome back, Crosstown Gamer here, and today we are going to continue and keep trudging along through our playthrough of number three in the coin series, A Distant Plane. Uh, as you are probably well aware, we are playing as the Coalition pieces versus the rest of the um, factions that are played via the bot flowcharts. And um, we're, you know, making our way through the deck slowly but surely, and um, we've only been through one propaganda card so far. So the next one is probably on the horizon, although it wasn't too far long ago that, that it was encountered, I think. So I think we probably still have at least a few more cards. Um, but regardless, let's get to playing. If you recall, there was a bit of an eligibility shuffle because the um, Islamabad track got switched to sponsorship, which, which means that non-player Taliban is eligible after they take events. Um, so they're still going to be eligible to play. And this is going to really bog down our ability to do anything of value. So we want to get this back back as quickly as we can. Um, and, ah, yes, the uh, Mountain Fastness is up next. For some reason I thought Night Letters was, but uh, probably just because I was talking about the Taliban and they're up next on the next card. All right. Um, so Mountain Fastness... Let's take a look-see here. Um, the Warlords are up first. So, are they going to do the event? Is the current card a momentum event? Or if the current card is a capability, which neither of those things are true. Okay, so it's going to play the shaded part if it's going to increase uncontrolled population Warlord resources or place uh, Warlord guerrillas on lines of communication or bases. So, and again, it's the shaded part. In a mountain, place any two insurgent pieces and flip any gorillas um, desired underground. So, um, let's see. I think technically this would place warlord gorillas. Oh no, not on locks. I thought at warlord bases. So is it going to increase uncontrolled population or warlord resources? Well, not resources. Um, but if by placing two um, warlord pieces, it would cause a controlled region to be uncontrolled, then I think um, that would classify as something they would be wanting to do. So the mountain spaces, again, are these darker regions of the map. Um, and um, so, yeah, here's a perfect example. It's a mountain space. There's only one piece here, so they could place two Warlord pieces here, and it would go from coin control to uncontrolled. Um, there might be other spaces like that. Um, so none of the unpopulated zones, or un... Uh, what's the word? Occupied <laughs> zones. Um, this is already uncontrolled. So here, it's coin controlled because it's two to one. Uh, one Taliban piece and two coin pieces. So here's another spot where two warlord pieces would cause this to go uncontrolled. Um, and it's a higher population, so that's probably what they want to do. Um, up there, two goes into four. So no, because we have six pieces. So they would get to have a total of four pieces to our uh, four here, five, six. That's not enough to flip control. Um, regardless, it looks like they are going to take this event because there are such spaces. Um, I just want to see if down here there's a three for, so one, two, three, four, five. No, this wouldn't, there's five coin pieces, the blue, one, two, three, four, five. And then there's only two insurgent pieces. So four to five is not enough to cause that control to go away. Um, and then same with here, there's five to it would, it would be four. So it looks like Orozgan and um, Nuristan is our, our, they are our two locations where this is going to be possible for them to do. And um, they don't have any existing pieces there. They could flip any guerrillas to underground. So they could flip the Taliban guerrilla underground if they wanted. Let's check the special event instructions for this event. It is number 66 up in the corner there, if you can see. So 66. In Mountain Fastness. They are the Warlords. Wait, what? Place bases. Oh, 
Insurgent pieces. Of course they want to place bases. So yeah, this is we don't even have to look at the uncontrolled. They just want to put uh they can place warlord bases. I I'm sorry, I misread the card, and it does say insurgent pieces, so that includes bases and gorillas. So good thing we read the special event instructions, and I just wasted five minutes of your time. Um, place one to two bases that are protected by a warlord gorilla, otherwise operations and special activity. So they're looking for locations in the mountains where they already have a gorilla, and they have room for a base. Um... I don't think that's anywhere. They don't have any gorillas over here. They don't have any gorillas here. The only mountain spaces they actually have gorillas on currently are this one and this one, and they're already full for bases. Oh, and, and this one up here, but they're full for bases. So it looks like they want to do operations and special activity. <laughs> After all that, they don't want to place... Um, because it says otherwise do operations and special activity. They're not even going to bother with... Um, creating uncontrolled population in those couple of spots, even though it would give them points. So, Rally would replace gorillas with bases. Um, nope. I. If you take a look around the map, pretty much everywhere where they have gorillas already are full on bases, except for this spot over here, but they don't have enough to replace, so they won't do that. Nope. First player positive victory margin? No, we are far from it. We are nowhere near our victory condition. Um, so no. So they're going to march. Oh, again with the marching. Um, they're going to leave one gorilla at each warlord base space. Again, to protect their own thing. And they're going to leave two on lines of communication. Um, and they're not going to create any control. So they're going to get one underground gorilla at a warlord base with no such gorilla where able. This is, again, just to protect their existing bases. Um, they don't need to worry about that right now. Get two gorillas onto each reachable line of communication. March active first. Um, and so let's take a look at that. They already... Ah, down here. They could march from here onto this line of communication. Um, and then marching onto lines of communication, I believe, is free for them. They can't get exactly two onto this one, so they won't bother. And it would leave uh, the space undefended, so they won't do that. Um, so let's do that first. Exactly two, and they march active first, it says. Um, active first. So they're going to take these two active gorillas. Oh, yeah. They're, they're not creating any control by doing this either, because it's already coin controlled. There's a crap ton of pieces in there. So we're going to move these um, onto the line of communication, and that's going to be free for them. I just wanted to point out we are doing the march in the in the menu of actions here. One resource per non-lock space, so this, is, this costs them zero resources to do. They're going to move warlords onto locks. Um... And if moving, then they're going to activate the gorilla. If the uh, Taliban plus the moving gorillas exceeds three, they're going to activate gorillas. Um, but they moved the active ones first, so it, they're not going to worry about activating gorillas anyway uh, in that situation. So they're just going to leave those active. So then... Get exactly... Nope, we did that one. Unless the last campaign... Uh, they're going to get three plus warlord gorillas from multiple random sources into each reachable one plus population with room for a base, starting with the highest population, then where there's no coalition. Um, okay, so they can pull from multiple sources into places with room for a base. So, you know, I'm not sure they can actually really do that um if they would have left these here they could have moved into this region which has room for a base um and it's a one plus population zone they could move into this one but it's zero plus population so they don't really need to bother with that um they could try to move oh i guess they could go into here um this so let me just get all this stuff one plus population room uh, space, room for, check, room for a base, check, 
and then highest population if there's multiple um, so let's take a look I think this might actually be the only spot uh, because the other spots again don't have room for a base or anything like that so I think this is the only spot so there's no tiebreaker so they just want to move in there and I believe in the marching possible locations, yeah, it's any spaces. They don't need to worry about support or opposition or any or coin control already. So they do want to march. They're active first, I believe. It does not say. They want to create no control, though. It's just there's two pieces here, and they they can't move all the pieces out because they would be leaving their bases undefended. And they want to move the active piece so that the pieces guarding the base are underground. If they leave the active one, it's ripe for a, an assault, and that would just be devastating for them. So they can move two pieces out of here, and it's said to get three plus pieces. So when they move in, they have to pull from a different source. And again, they're going to take the active one first. Um... And I didn't create any control. This is still uncontrolled. Barely, but it is. Um, and then the number of guerrillas moving plus Taliban exceeds three. So they have to, since there's four here, so they do actually have to activate this guerrilla as well. When marching in big numbers, um, they are exposed. They can conceal their numbers when they're, when they're marching in smaller groups. Okay, so... That is not a line of communication destination, so that will cost them a resource. Then... Remove the most control by players um, if in a loop. So, are there any spots where they could remove control now? They've already marched these gorillas and these ones, so the the only other locations they can really move from are going to be those lines of communication. And I don't think there's any that are going to allow them to remove control. Oh, well, they did remove control from here. I'm sorry. So, because, um, again, there's four pieces here and there's only two coin pieces here. So they, they did that. I don't think there's any other space where that's an issue. So the uncontrolled pop that goes up by two and the population, coin population goes down by two. I think that's probably that. So that was their march. Are they at 43 plus resources? No, then they're gonna cultivate. In a space, one pop, warlord gorillas outnumber police, selected for a rally or march. Uh, they are going to cultivate there. And remember, they just get to plop down bases, I think, in this situation. Um, so, province selected for rally or march. Uh, have greater than zero population, more warlord, guerrillas, and police. They're going to place a base there. So, that's only going to be this one location. And that's in Nuristan, so they'll place their base. Boom. And that... Um, doesn't affect their um, win condition or anything, but it does. Um, I thought they also had another victory or uh, another action that kind of like removes their bases and trades them in for resources. Yeah, like this one, traffic. Um, but they're not doing that yet because they're... Uh, oh yeah, they're going to cultivate in as many spots as possible, and then once they're done with that, they're going to traffic and then like get a ton of resources for that. That's how they're going to get their uh, econ going in the late game. So that was their Operation and Special Activity. That does leave this event open for the Taliban to take. Let's see if they will take it. And spoiler alert, we do have to check something for that. Um... All right, so if current card or next card is a capability for the Taliban, we will look, and it is a capability for the next card. So then C8.1 capability. Um, I saw this coming up as I was sitting down to play, so I just opened it to the right section of the rulebook so I could show you. Um, 
capabilities. If it's a Taliban, okay, if this or the next card's a capability, the non-player faction has at hand or definitely will um, be able to play it through eligibility and such. If 1d6 rolls less than or equal to the number of unplayed propaganda cards, then it will take the current capability card, otherwise pass and take the upcoming one. Um, so we're going to roll a die, and if it's less than the number of propaganda cards left in the deck, which is three, so um, less than or equal to, excuse me. So if they roll a three, a two, or a one, they got a 50% chance, then they're going to pass on this card in order to take the capability coming up. Which, I think this is not taking into account the fact that the Islamabad track is eligible after events now. So, with sponsorship, if they were to take this event, they would still remain eligible. They would get to take the next event too. That's probably what they want to do. Let me double check the Islamabad track rules for the, the bot um, to see if they pass to take the next event or they'll take both events. Okay, so I'm at a crossroads here. Um, the rules tend to be very explicit about, you know, this is the letter of the law. Um, it's very clear in its intentions, and um, I don't see anywhere in the rules that talks about this situation. Maybe it's something that doesn't come up very often. Um, so there's two there's two schools of thought here. Either I can play with the letter of the law, which but the only thing it says about this is note the Taliban have this special effect. Uh, it doesn't say to take that in this case or what not, but. Um, so this is the, the letter of the law tends to imply that I would pass the, it's very clear. It says, if you roll a die and it's blah, 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 pass on this card and take the upcoming card. I, if there's any sort of ambiguity though, I usually like to make it harder for myself. So if I were a player and I was playing by this, you know, I would obviously take the, event remain eligible and then take the capability as well and then remain eligible still um it might be a balancing thing though that that it doesn't explicitly say that um because it would be too overpowered um because if i was a player i wouldn't get this effect at all so um i'm gonna go with what the rules say because gmt does a really great job in their rule books of trying to outline all the different scenarios and situations that you could be in i typically like to make things harder on myself but in this case I think it's not quite so amb ambiguous that um, it would just have the Taliban just like take events until eternity. Um, so I'm going to roll anyway. And uh, remember, on a one, a two, or a three, they will pass and take this card. Otherwise, they're going to try to take this event probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, so in that case, if they passed... Um, it would play that they'd play the shaded part if possible. They'd remain eligible and then they would take it anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to let the die basically decide for me which option to take. So one, two or three, we're going to pass um, four, five or six. They're going to do the event two. So they will pass. They get a resource for that. And then them passing allows us to go. And now we can take the event, or we can do a limited operation. Um, or we can pass, but we don't want to pass because then we're going to be ineligible on the next card anyway. So we want to do something. Um, so the unshaded part says, move a faction's pieces from two mountains where it has no bases um, to available. A faction's pieces from two mountains where it has no bases. So for example, let's see. I think all the, like here's a spot. The Taliban, has, it's a mountain spot. Taliban has pieces, but no bases. I can remove this to available. It's just one thing, one and done. Um, same with Kabul, I could take this ta lone Taliban piece out. But like Taliban base here, uh, war or uh, yeah, warlord base like all up in these spots. It'd be great to do this and 
uh, take out um, the warlords. So really, that's kind of a pitiful event. The alternative is to do a limited operation in one spot. Is there anything we could do? We could, if we did an assault down here, we could potentially get both of those pieces. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure that's really that exciting either. It doesn't get me out of bed. Um, this might be the same thing if we did an assault. We can only do it in one spot again because we have this limited operation. And our assault... Do we get anything here? Airstrike, sweep, airstrike? No, I wish we could do an airstrike. That'd be great. Um, but down here we have to worry about after Coalition completes an assault, they can place a gorilla back. So we would just be taking out this base or this base, and then they'd get um, and the gorilla, but then the gorilla would come back. So that's kind of crappy as well. Um, and it would use resources. I'm thinking the event, even though it's kind of unpalatable, is really the way to go. Well, I don't know. The base, again. Okay, let's just do the assault. Um, let's look at the sheet. Sorry, the camera's not very exciting here. Um, assault, three government resources, needs to have coalition troops, um, and three... Government resources if desired for government cubes to add enemy losses. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So I think what this is saying is it'll only cost three resources if I choose to use government cubes as well as my own um, to ensure further enemy losses, which thematically makes sense if the government's getting involved they're going to have to spend resources to do it so it'll cost three resources we're going to remove an active gorilla for each troops cube um, count government cubes only if resources paid so we will do that and we will do it here sorry here <laughs> um, here we have a troop and a troop so there's two troops we can remove two pieces, active gorillas first, then this base here. So we did that. Um, that does adjust the, well, resources first. One, two, three. It also adjusts our, uh, the oppo opposition plus bases down by one. And then they get to put, because of their capability down here, they get to place a gorilla into any one of the assault spaces, so that one. So we got rid of a base, we lost them a point. I don't know if that was really the most effective use of our time, but it's better than not going, getting to go on that card at all, which is what was going to happen. Um, I think I did everything for the assault. I removed, yeah, that's fine. Um, we don't adjust support or anything, and we still have control, great. So then we'll adjust the eligibility. These go back. These go back. Uh, we'll play the night letters. The coalition or the Taliban. Sorry, we're the coalition. The Taliban is going to take this capability because we rolled the die. And what do they get? Training places no more than four cubes per space. I believe a train operation places six cubes, government cubes. So um, this. Uh, cuts it by a third. That was their event. Now the government's going to get to do an Operation Special Activity. Um, I'm opening the wrong sheet. <laughs> you don't care about that. Oh, it's taking forever. Sorry. Okay. So the next card is not a momentum or event or capability card. So they're going to play the event. Oh, they can't play the event. So they're going to do an operation and special activity. Assault would add two plus coin control or remove Taliban bases. This is probably going to be a yes because assault is going to remove Taliban bases um, like here, here, at least those two spots. Regardless, 
It, it will, yes. They're going to assault maximum of three spaces, so it's going to cost them nine resources. To establish coin control first and foremost. Okay, let's let's look at this. What are the spots? Okay. Very, very first thing, preliminary thing. Check where this is possible to do. It's possible to do in any space. In each space, you're going to remove an active guerrilla or base for every two troops. Um, in Kabul or line of communication, one per any true cubes. So we're looking for troops, unless it's in Kabul, which we already have control there, so it's not going to matter. Um, and then in the mountains, it's going to be one per three government troops. And they get aid plus, uh, added to aid for every base that's removed. Okay, so to add coin control, what are the spaces that don't have coin control that have government troops? Um, none of these spots up here have government troops. Um, here already has coin control, already has, already has, already has. So they're not going to get to add coin control anywhere. However, they're going to remove bases and then um, the most gorillas within one and two, last on locks with player or Taliban. Um, so this doesn't mean this is the last priority. This means it's going to remove all of or the remaining uh, gorillas from a line of communication. Um, and I don't think that's going to matter anywhere because, um, like this Taliban is underground, so we can't remove from there. This would only remove one. Um, actually I think it's per two cubes, so I wouldn't remove any at all. Then they're going to assault the player if possible, which I don't think this takes into account the fact that we're the coalition, so that I don't think they want to assault, I don't think they can assault, um, remove an active. Yeah, it says removing guerrillas or insurgent bases. So they're not going to assault us. They will assault the Taliban and then the warlords at their bases to remove bases. I guess, no, insurgent base, not any base. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting tied up in the fact that it's like, do they really want to assault us? No, they don't. Um, okay, so Taliban bases, and then most guerrillas, and up to three spots. So this is a mountain space. Um, so it's going to take one per three government troops. So they're not going to get to remove the base there. Actually, I don't think, man, after all that, I went through this whole rigmarole with you, and I don't think they can actually remove any bases because um, I forgot that it's one for every two. So here, it's one for every two. They can remove this piece, not the base. Blah. Yeah, that's trash. I, I was setting it up so they could just knock them down and then they don't do it. Um, so this is a no, actually. Um, two plus player pieces on lines of communication or Taliban exceeds enemies on the three or the four. No, Taliban does not exceed enemies on the three or the four, and the there's no player pieces on there. Ten plus government troops available. Government troops. There is exactly ten available. Um, there's more police than that, but yes. Or train would place a base. No, it wouldn't because there's no bases left, but okay. At coin bases or cobble, max of three spaces, not for more than two thirds of resources rounded down. Okay, place max cubes and up to two more troops than police if available. And remember, now we can only do four cubes per space, so that was timely for the Taliban. In highest, one plus, okay, no base but room, place a base. So they can't place any bases. With no base place, one. In one highest two plus pop space with no coin, no, with coin control, no coalition base, no terror, train, 
placing zero if no base. Placing zero if no base. Why? Placing zero if no base. Am I just stupid? Why would they why would they train in a spot and then not place anything there? Oh, and then civic action. I just need to continue reading the sentence. Um and then govern for patronage. Okay. All right, whatever. So the highest two plus pop space with coin control, no coalition base, no terror. What are the two plus pop spaces? This one, it has base though. Um, uh, coalition base. Are there any that don't have? This doesn't have a coalition base. And no terror, so this one. Um, I think, does it need room for base? No. Okay. Train, placing zero if no base. There is a base. And then, civic act if no support. Yep. And then, govern for patronage. Wow, there's a lot happening here. So... We're going to um, train in that spot at the top of the map. And we're going to place some because um, in each coin base space, place up to six government cubes. Then if desired in one training space, place with the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If coin control, uh, buy civic actions. So they will place uh, up to two more troops than police if available so they're gonna they get to place four cubes um and the, they want to place up to two more troops than police if possible so i think the composition should look something like this three troops um two two more troops than the police um, so I'll place those up there and then they will buy civic action, which costs, I believe, three resources um, to buy a civic action. And yeah, I'm just looking for, I wish it told me down here, but I, I believe it's also three. So it costs three, one, two, three to do this in one spot, and then three, one, two, three, to do the civic action, and that gives support. Okay, so that's three support. One, two, three. Thank you, government. And um, yeah, I believe they can do that. Uh, they can buy civic actions even if they placed stuff because it's got coin control. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting tied up. Um, then, so that was one location. Then it says, and then govern for patronage. So they're going to govern um, for patronage in up to two highest population spaces with support, coin control, no coalition base. So the govern, what does that do? Um, if no returnees there, place the returnees, or if no coalition base there, transfer population value from aid to patronage and set it to neutral. Oh, those bastards. Okay, so they're going to take our support away. Um, so the aid go, is getting transferred. So if the population is three. It's two plus the one returnee. So the aid goes down from 33 to 30. The patronage goes up from 10... Uh, to 13, and that causes this to go up, back up to 30. Man, the government is strong in this. It's it's hard to... They're all strong. Everyone's strong. So if everyone's strong, no one is, I guess. And then set it to neutral. So that was their patronage um, in one spot. They can go in up to two. Um, and... Uh, there is a dagger there. Oh, then complete essay. So, um, per the relevant box. 
So they did the, they did the patronage in one spot. We just have to remember that because they get it in a second spot if possible. Um, if no, SA. What's the SA? Special activity or base place yet. So there was a special activity. We skipped this. Um, training placing cubes at Kabul, where there's the least government cubes, um, or at the highest population for other coin bases as well. Um, if there's a tie, Kabul and other coin bases. So where are the coin bases? We got one here, we got one down here, and we got one way up there. The one with the least amount of government um, cubes is going to be this one here in Herat. So they will place up to four cubes. Again, they're doing this three in one thing here. That's the least government cubes. Then um, in Kabul they have seven. Up here they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And down here they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and seven. So then it goes to highest population, which is Kabul. And again, they're gonna place just a massive amount of pieces in here. Okay. So that was their train. Oh, we got to pay for that. So it's six more resources. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then they're going to continue eight at two or less or warlords a player. No. Well, we already know they have to govern. Um, and govern in a place in the, okay, up to two highest pop spaces with coin support coin control and no coalition base um, i'm just looking for other coin support coin control no coalition base Herat is one and i think that's it We've got bases everywhere, so um, there's no returnees though. They would place the returnees there, so they're gonna they can't do with um, this top one there. So they're gonna place one pop boss pop markers in the um, highest one plus pop spaces with coin support, control, coin control, and bases of government or coalition. Okay. So there's one plus, okay, they want to go where there's bases of government, and there's already returnees in two of the, th or one, one of the three, and that's up there. Um, this one has the highest population with coin control and bases of government or coalition. The government is the first priority, so I think they actually do want to go here and place the la uh, second to last returnee here. Um, that does cause coin control to go up by one Let's put this to its plus one side I probably need to re go through and make sure those are actually at the correct number but I can do that later um, that was their second patronage so oh no it needs support it needs support to do that they can't do it there because there's no support Um, yeah, I don't think there's actually another location then that has coin control, no returnees, bases, and support. I think this is the only spot with support on the map other than Kabul. And they can't do the patronage thing in either of those locations because there's a coalition base there. Yep, okay. Just validating. And then, um, so it says up to two spaces. We did it in one. That's good enough for government work. <laughs> um, and then these will adjust in their eligibility. Now the Taliban did do an event, so they will remain eligible again as per the Islamabad track. We will play the next event, which is U.S.-Pakistan talks. And the following one is going to be um, Dostum. All right, but we will leave that for next time. This has been a great pleasure for me to bring this content to you. So um, as always, if you do see any rules mistakes or you didn't like my interpretation of one or more of the rules, 
please do let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear about it and, and improve my gameplay and make sure that what you're watching is um, as accurate as possible. So have a great uh, rest of your day, week, whenever. Bye.